Hello there, my name's Alice. And my name's Rosa. And today you're going to learn how to make your own show about the environment. So for this workshop, you're going to need a pen or pencil, uh, maybe some crayons, and some paper. You can pause the video now if you need to go get some. So, what do we mean by the environment? We mean everything around us. The trees, the animals, the rivers, the oceans, everything that makes up the planet we live on. As humans, we need to look after the environment because the way we act can change the climate that we live in. It's getting harder for animals and plants to survive, and that makes it harder for us humans too. But together, we can act and make change, and this is what this workshop's about. So today, we're going to help you to make your very own show all about nature and the environment. This is a great way to show your family and friends how they can take care of our world, and it'll be a lot of fun too. First, we're going to decide what your play is about. Who's your main character? Do you have a favourite animal? Maybe it's your favourite animal. What part of nature would you like this character's story to happen in? It could be the desert, or a rainforest. Perhaps it's underwater in the ocean, or maybe it's all the way in Antarctica. Why not have a go at drawing your character in the environment that you choose? You can pause the video now to make your drawing. So what did you draw, Alice? I drew a frog. I drew a frog in a pond. Nice. Um, well, my favourite animal is a shark, so I think he's going to be the hero of my story. He's a friendly shark, though, and he lives underwater in the ocean. Very nice. Next up, we're going to find some objects to help inspire us to make our show. So the best part about this is, it can be anything you can find around your house or your garden. Even things that seem boring can be very exciting in a story. So we've each brought some examples. What do you have, Alice? Well, I brought this plant and this hat. And I brought this bottle and this book. So how do you think you could use those objects in your play? Oh, I'm wondering if maybe this book has magic spells in it that help the plant to grow. Mm. And maybe the bottle contains a message saying this is the hat of a polar bear that's lost in the desert. So pause the video now and have a look for some objects and we'll see you in a minute. Now we'd like you to make up a few facts about your objects. So we'll try this out on Alice going to ask you a few questions. So Alice, you've got your lovely hat there. Yep. I must say it looks very excellent. Thank you very much. So where did it come from? Well, this came from the polar bear who's lost in the desert. And who does it really belong to? The polar bear. Okay. And does it have any special powers? Yeah, it has a special power to keep the polar bear at minus 50 degrees, which is freezing. Wow. Um, even in the hottest of suns very powerful hat. Now see if you can answer these three questions about your objects. Remember the answers can be as magical and fantastical as you like. So where did it come from? Who does the object belong to? And does it have any special powers? So now we have your main character, we have a nature setting for them, and we have some objects that may or may not have some very special powers. But how are you going to perform your character? How does your character walk? How does your character talk? We'll give you an example now with our characters. My character is a frog and it walks like this. And it talks like this! Ribbit! This is how my shark swims around. <coughs> As you can hear, he doesn't talk very much. He mostly just makes roaring noises. Pause the video now to decide how your character walks and talks, and maybe what it even wears. So now we have your main character, and they have a setting in nature where this story is going to take place. So it's time to decide what the story is, what happens to them. So there are a few different types of story we can choose from, and we're going to talk about two of them now. One of the story types is overcoming a monster. So, for example, Jack and the Beanstalk, where Jack has to battle a giant. So maybe your main character has to overcome some kind of monster. Or perhaps there's not one big monster, but you're doing a story that's more like a voyage from home. So perhaps your character has to go on a special quest that takes them away from their home and they overcome some different obstacles and they meet some different characters along the way. Choosing a story can help you decide how your story starts and how it finishes. Does your character have to battle a monster? Do they have a special mission to save their home? 
pause the video now and have a think about how you want your story to go. Now you have your story, it's time to add some special effects. What sounds are in your story? Have a look around your house to see what different objects you can find that might help you make those sounds. If the environment your story is in is windy, why not try a fan? Or perhaps you have some birds flapping around, so some gloves work great for this. And maybe your character has big heavy footsteps, you can use some books for that. Very ominous. Pause the video again now to go and find some objects to help you make sounds. Now is the most exciting part, it is showtime. You have your characters, you have your setting, you have your props, you have your special effects and now you can show it to your audience. Maybe this is your friends, your family or your teddy bears. You could also think about where your play would fit best. Would you like to perform it outside or would you like to perform it inside? Do you want your audience to be sitting on chairs in a row or do you want them to be standing up or perhaps walking around with you? If you can do video calls, you could also show it to some friends or family who aren't in the house with you. Next up, you need to invite your audience. You could use your drawing as a poster for the show. And importantly, what's your show called? You can pause the video now to write the title of your show on the poster. My show's called A Frog Saved the Pond. Sounds like a happy story. What's yours called? Mine is called The Shark That Went Up a Mountain. It gets quite interesting, this one. Well, now all that's left is for you to perform your show. So we hope you had a really good time doing this workshop. And we hope that your audience enjoy your story. We hope this workshop showed you how cool nature is. We think it's pretty cool, and we hope that you do too. Thank you very much. All right. Bye! Bye!